Today we're talking about the life st stages, um, planning for retirement. Now here's the thing, nobody teaches you this stuff in school. They all expect you to somehow intuitively know what you're supposed to do, what you're supposed to save. Let me help you out with some of this here. So today we're talking about what you should be doing in all the stages of your life. 21 to 35, we call that the saver. This is when you establish really a ritual of saving. So you start putting $5 away a week in the savings account. You move it up to six, to 10. Every year you increase it a little bit. You get a raise at work. You get a 3% raise. Put 1% into that savings account. Let that grow. If you have children, this is when you start saving for the kids. You know, again, we're not trying to bankrupt you, but you're gonna start. The earlier you start, the more the money can earn, the easier it will be in the end. If you work for a firm that offers a traditional IRA or a 401k, you work for a nonprofit that has a 403b and they match, take advantage of the match. They match the first dollar for dollar for first 3%, you put 3% in at the minimum because at this point you have just doubled your money. Nowhere else can you double your money legally without a risk. Um, and then again, every year you're gonna grow up a little bit more. Just make it a little bit more going in there, probably when you get raises. Another thing that you could use is HSAs, which are health savings accounts. Now these are traditionally linked with a company where they have a high deductible medical plan. So with that plan, you might have to pay the first $3,000 out of pocket. You put money into the HSA and you don't use it this year. Well then that money is earning money and it grows next year and so on and so forth. It's really good for people who are young to start this because you're traditionally healthy, you're not seeing the doctor near as much, so every penny you put in that HSA, by the way, which is pre-tax, so it's a nice deduction, well, so it saves you money on your taxes, but it's gonna build over the years, and that's what we want, we want long-term wealth. If you are very fortunate to work for a company that has a stock purchase plan, try to take advantage of it. And what I mean for that is if the stock is selling for $50, but you can buy it for 40, go ahead and buy it. You have now made $10 or 20%. If you do that over a long term, it's a nice way for the wealth to grow. And you can do a um, dividend reinvestment plan, which means that as it pays a dividend, you're not taking the money out, it's being used to buy more stock. Again, we're trying to talk about long-term growth here. Not something quick and easy, just something long and slow, but, but relatively easy, relatively painless. We wanna train you. The next age group is 35 to 50. And at this point is when you're going to start increasing your savings. And by the end, not by the end, by the time you turn 50, I want you to be up to saving 15% of all your income. So you're going to maximize your investments in tax-deferred and tax-free vehicles. Tax-deferred is like a 401k. The money you put into that is pre-tax, and it means that there are no taxes taken out of it. You have heard of Roth IRAs. That's You put that in after-tax money. Um, the Roth IRA will grow tax-free, and then when you take it out when you retire, you don't have to pay any taxes on it. It's a great vehicle. You also want to continue the funding plans for your children and grandchildren if you choose. When you turn 50, we call that the pre-retiree. So you've already increased your savings to 15%. Now you can start making catch-up provisions in the IRA and the 401k accounts, putting in the money that you maybe should have when you were younger. This is when you start looking at purchasing long-term care insurance. And what that is, is in, in case you go into a nursing home, it's an avenue to pay for it, so you're maybe in a nicer one than would be otherwise. We've all heard the horror stories where someone's aunt or uncle or grandparents were put in a nursing home where they were ignored, where perhaps they got bed sores. You want better, you have to be able to pay for it. To pay for it, we recommend you get in the long-term care insurance. This is also when you start looking to see if your company has a, a pension plan. What are the distributions going to be like? Are they going to pay for your medical insurance? You need to start finding out some of these answers so that you can plan appropriately. The next thing I want to talk about is the exciting beneficiary <laughs> designations. Um, on your life insurance, your retirement, and your health savings accounts, whoever you designate as the beneficiary is where the money goes, regardless of what the will says. We had a case a couple years ago where um, when they were picking up the return, I reviewed them and said, you know, it's time for you guys to check and make sure your beneficiaries are who they're supposed to be. Well, the next year, the husband and wife came in, and the wife started elbowing the husband and said, you need to tell Carol. You need to tell Carol. And I was like, okay, tell Carol what? And he said, well, I looked up last year, and for my 401k account, my ex-wife was still on it. So if he would have passed, 
his ex-wife would have inherited all the money in that account. And then he went on to say, yeah, my wife told me if I had died and she had gotten the money that she would have unburied me, kicked me in the bottom, and then maybe buried me again. Maybe not. She was kind of angry. But everybody laughed because it, it didn't happen. Now, he might have actually changed the form with HR. Maybe the form got lost in the mail. Maybe the person in HR filed in the wrong folder. That's why we re recommend that you check this out every two to three years. The other thing I want you to do is look at your life insurance policies. Now that you're in your 50s, you might not need all the policies you have. You no longer have young children to support. So let's see what you need and let's get rid of the policies that you don't need. At age 55, early retirees can access their employer retirement accounts without penalty. So that means you can start taking money out of the um, your pension account. Now, without penalty refers to taxes. Normally, if you take it out at age 55, you're going to get less than half of what you would have if you waited to 65. So I'm giving you the information, but I definitely don't recommend it. 59 and a half, you can start taking the money out of the 401k accounts without penalty. Now, the next stage we call the retiree is age 60 and above. For a widow or widower, you can start claiming against your spouse's account at age 60. 62, you can start taking reduced Social Security benefits. It's also the earliest age to um, apply for or qualify for a reverse mortgage. 65 is when you must have applied for Medicare. So if you're getting close, three months beforehand, put it on your calendar. Go to ssa.gov, socialsecurityadministration.gov, sign up for Medicare. If you do not sign up before, well, when you turn 65, the rates will be much higher the year later, like three times as much. So at 65, other things happen. You're no longer eligible to contri um, contribute to an HSA, that health savings account, um, because now you're in Medicare. But you can't access your HSA account for non-medical purposes without a penalty now. So you've saved up all that money, now you get to enjoy the benefit of it. Retirement age. Everybody knows that when their retirement age is, but just to recap it, if you were born before 1954, you get to retire at age 66. Add two months to it for every year thereafter. So 55 to 59, you add two months to the age 66. If you were born in 19... 60 or later, you don't get to retire until you're 67. Spouse becomes eligible for retirement benefits at age 62 or higher, provided the spouse is retired. Those rules are subject to change. Um, again, Social Security has a really good website. They have a phone number on there. You can use that. When I went to school, they taught us that the minute you are eligible for Social Security, you should claim it. I'm telling you against that. I'm advising against it. Social Security grows by 8% for every year you defer. No other um, retirement account will give you that type of money. So what we're suggesting now is that you use the money from your IRA, your Roth IRA, to live, taking your pension, and then when you have to, take the money from Social Security. Okay, the last age we're worried about is at 70 and a half. At 70 and a half, you are required to take minimum distributions from your tax-deferred accounts, including the Roth IRA, the 401k, um, and the 403bs. You are no longer eligible to make traditional IRA contributions, but if otherwise eligible, you can still make contributions to Roth IRAs and spousal Roth IRAs. Then we want to kind of, a couple weird little loose ends that didn't fit anywhere else, minors. Before the age of 21, if you have a child or a grandchild and they're earning a living, they're working at a local fast food joint, and they're reporting the income, you can set up a Roth IRA for them. So the Roth IRA is after tax money. You just go to your local bank, credit union, financial advisor, and you can put up to 2000 a year, probably more by the time this comes out, and the money will grow tax-free. If you start when they're 16 and you put in for four years, so you put in a total of $8,000, Traditionally, by the time everything um, rolls and averages, they'll have over a million dollars when they retire at 67. Now this is money you're not going to let them know they have, 
because in their 20s they're going to take it out and they're going to buy a car. In their late 20s they're going to blow it on something else. This is when they come to you in their, in their 30s and they're like, Mom, Dad, Grandma, Grandpa, oh my gosh, the house payment, the um, you know daycare, my job's horrible, I'm never going to save for retirement. Then you pull out that account and you're like, oh, by the way, I got this for you. You'll be the coolest ever. And then the other thing which we touched about earlier is if you divorce, please make sure everything is titled properly.